GPT. Today we'll do an HTML primer, and then we'll show you how to use Godot and ChatGPT to cre create games. And so a number of years ago, I actually created a course uh, using C Sharp uh, or learning C Sharp to uh, by creating games. And and the problem with that, I use Unity, which is an amazing software, but the problem is it's really heavy. So it really lugs your system down and some people had issues installing. So I went to something lighter, I thought we might try it again. And it turns out it, it, it's a lot smoother, that's Godot. And you can use it to teach C Sharp and it's very light. And you can use ChatGTP to actually assist you in teaching. So it's almost like a paired programmer, but your paired programmer is artificial intelligence in a box, right? So before we proceed, let's go ahead and do a quick icebreaker. And we have a few people here, so I'll call on everyone. <laughs> we did this last week, but I want to just do it again. I thought it was so good. What is your favorite democratizing technology and what is your best use case for it? So uh, basically, here's a list of uh, democratizing technologies. You may have one that's not on the list, but it's the internet, personal computers, mobile phones, open source software, crowdfunding, online education, social media, 3D printing, solar panels, drones, and open AI. So what is your favorite democratizing technology? What do you think? So that said, I'm, I'll hop right into uh, using chat TTP and we'll create a simple web page and then we'll move on and we'll create, create a simple game, okay? So let's use HTML create a, So I'll bring up chat TTP and create a, a website. And this is gonna be simple, it's gonna be a hello world. So let me bring it up. And so ChatGDP Chat basically runs in your browser. You don't have to install anything. Right now it's free to use. I imagine sometimes there's gonna be a price. However, uh, OpenAI really is into democratizing technology. So I would expect there's be a price, but I don't think the price is gonna be super high. We'll see, All right? And bring up my, there you go. And I'm gonna go right to ChatGDP. And this is what we're entering into what's called prompt engineering. And so this is intelligence in the box and it's gonna do exactly what you tell it to do. So when you ask it to do something, it'll, it'll do it if you ask it to do it. So, and the, the art here, and Isabella's learning this and a lot of my interns are, is learning what to ask it, okay? And there's millions of people using it right now. So we'll hopefully it'll come up. I think I had a page here with it up. Let me check my, let me check my pages. Cool, and we're up. All right, so I'm gonna say create an HTML um hello world page page that looks nice you know uh okay let's say that i'm gonna look nice okay here's one so that's going to automatically write the code for me and we've seen this over and over again this is not just html it's pretty much any language you want to write in you can use it for and if you go to YouTube, you'll see just a, a peripheral of different uh, tutorials being presently released of people using it for just amazing various uh, applications. And you're going, wow, I didn't know it could be used for that. And also comments and tells you what is what is done. So realize I didn't write a bit of code. Uh, ChatGDP did. You can copy that code and we'll go over to Replit. And I had Replit up. Let me see if I can find it. And I'm gonna create an HTML page, which is really nice. And uh, okay, create replit. And it's probably gonna give me something. Okay, and it gives me a file, just get rid of that. It's just a simple hello world, I wanted mine stylized. So let's paste the code in that we just copied from ChatGDP and run it. Oh, well, okay. Not the most amazing page. Let's, uh, let's, uh, um, uh, do a little bit more work. Let's add something. So chat GDP is like a um, chat system. It remembers what you did and you can add more to it. So for the code above, above, anybody got an idea? They'd like to add something? Add a story about frogs. What do you think? We can see it building something. There you go, it's starting to add a story. Hello world, and once upon a time, there was a group of frogs who lived in a beautiful pond. They spent their days uh, swimming and catching uh, flies, and they were very happy. One day a group of uh, mean toads came <laughs> to the pond and tried to take it over. The frogs were worried, but they didn't give up. 
they banded together and fought back. And in the end, they were able to drive the uh, toads away and keep their beloved pawn. The frogs lived happily ever after. <laughs> All right, let's see that. Oh, there's my story about frogs. Let me see if we can get it to add an image. Now, chat, chat, presently, chat TDP does not reach out to the web, but we'll see if it can add an image of frogs. Let's see. To this code, can 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 you add an image of frogs? We'll see if it can do that. And so you're really just kind of learning how to talk to it and you know and, and play around. So it's a lot of fun. This is really great for refactoring because if you create some code and you want to add some more code and add some more code, this is what you would do. Let's see here. It's going to get put my story in there about the frogs. And see if we can get an image in there. And it just says frogs JPEG. So you would have to create the frog JPEG and put the image in and pull it in. So it does create the code for you to do that with though. All right, let's go to the next demo. Any any comments on this? Uh, have you seen this before, Bilal? No, honestly not. I, I just uh What do you think? Yeah, it's it's cool. I mean it's Yeah, I, it writes pi it writes Python, it writes C sharp. If you say write test, it will write test for you. It does all yeah. that. Yeah, that's so convenient. All right, let's go on to the next topic. Excellent. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at Godot. And like I said, I had created a C-sharp course using Unity, and it was a great course, but Unity is really heavy. Godot is really light, so and you can just create a game. So the whole idea is you know, engineering prompt. And what I want to do is tell it what I want. So I'm going to say create a C-sharp Godot program that moves a sprite on the screen using arrow keys and use this to start to start public class sprite colon godot.sprite after import. So what I'm doing, I'm kind of setting up the code that you're about to see so it writes code like that so uh, I don't have to um, you know, do a lot of reprogramming. So let me show you what I mean by that. I'm going to ramp godot. Here's godot. Godot's a fun program. It's pretty light. It has all the three, uh, 2D and 3D ability to make nice little games. Um, it's free. All right, so I'm going to create a new game. I'll call it 06. Okay. New project. Game 06. And we're going to create the folder. That's where the game's going to go. We're going to edit and create. There you go. All right, now, don't make any mistakes. I'm going to hit a plus sign here. We're going to create a uh, sprite node. So type in sprite. Double click on that. And you can see my sprite notes there, and I want it to have an image that it can drag around on the screen. So I'll drag this over to the, the texture. And that's my Godot, and I want to double check, make sure that runs. So if I run that, okay, let's go ahead and save that. It's going to run that sprite. And you can, you'll be able to see it right up at the corner because this blue box basically is your view box. And so I can move him to the center. We'll do that next. So now we want to code this guy with the arrow keys. And so it will take a little bit of time coding the arrows, but I'm going to let chat GVT do that for me. So I'm going to click here, and the code I want to create is C-sharp. OK, so click on C-sharp and go ahead and create. Now I did that right. And you can see here's C-sharp code here, and it'd be great for learning C-sharp. And you see this first line is public class sprite uh, colon Godot.sprite. Now that's what I want chat TDP to, to write, because if I just tell it to write the arrow moving the sprite, then it's going to write some code, but I have to rewrite it to fit this format. So you can tell it what to write. So I'm going to come along here and I'm going to write that code or write that prompt. So the prompt I'm going to give it is create a C sharp Godot program that moves a sprite on the screen using arrow keys and use the, this to start public class sprite uh, colon godot.sprite actor imports. So I'm telling it exactly what I wanted to do. So let's see if it does that for me. 
So we're going to go into chat GDP. Here we go. And I'm going to clear this, kind of clear the context because it remembers what you did previously. I'm going to put this prompt in and see if it works. Sure, here it is. So start writing the code for you. Here's my imports, Godot and system. There is that name, sprite, colon, godot.sprite, like I asked it to. It's going to create the vectors, and it's going to tell us what speed I want to move in. Now it's going to create the process um, file. What the process file does, that's your frame iterator. So it's basically 24 or 30 frames a second, whatever you're doing. It's going to run the code inside that. And you can see you've got your key movements. Your input here is going to be up right, up left, up down, excuse me, UI down, and UI up. So it wrote the code. And I should be able to paste this right in. It should run. And what I like to do with um, ChatGDP is just run one segment of code at a time to see if things work. Because if there's an error, then I'll fix that as we move on. So it's called refactoring, just one piece at a time. Now, what I found is I actually have a demo out there. I just sent that out to you guys. And I'm using um, basically ChatGDP to run Terraform card. I found about a 96% accuracy. So I had to, out of 108 lines, I had to correct only four. So that's pretty cool. So let's go ahead and come along here and just take a segment of this code. This is the top part. So let's paste this in. All right. Go to your code. All right, go to your top part. And I can just leave the comments there and just paste in the new code. Okay, and just run it. You know, just run it. See what happens. See if you've got any errors, see if everything works correctly. Okay. All right. No errors, and it ran. Sure. It's not doing anything yet, so let's put our keys in there. Now, if you look down here, your process code is down here. So I can uncomment and put that in, or I can just grab this, this code down here. This is my choice. So let's just grab this code right here. And let me take a look and see what I'm doing, make sure I get the brackets right. See, this is bracket matches that bracket, OK? So this is my process code. Copy that, and let's go and take a look and see what we have here. See, there's that in bracket. So I am i won't uncomment. I'll just put this in. OK, cross your fingers. Let's see if it works. I haven't seen any errors yet, so I was happy with that. Let me try my keyboard. Woohoo, up and down, <laughs> left and right. <laughs> I love it. I didn't write a single thing, okay? It, it was all written by, uh, you know, chat G, GPT. So it's pretty cool. <laughs> I love it. All right, so <laughs> let's talk about what we just did. <laughs> what do you think? Matter of fact, let's, let's do one more thing, and I'll just do this as illustrate. I won't run this code. Let's do one more thing. And let's say, OK, write test for this code. Let's see if we can write some test. Let's see what chat GDP is doing. So sure, it's going to write some test. <laughs> yep. It's going to simulate pressing. There you go. Love that. It's going to advance the game by one frame. This is going to check that the sprite has moved to the right one frame using the assert. Yeah, it's going to do another test for you. There you go. And you can tell it what test, uh, to, uh, to, what type of test to use, what kind of package for testing, and it'll do that for you. And there you go again. Create a sprite and set the its initial position. Simulate pressing the left arrow key. I bet it's going to give me all options. Yeah, it's going to do that. It's going to, it's going to do all the presses for me. Yeah. So you guys are testers. What do you think? Is there a cognitive uh, voice recognition uh, to chat with this application? To uh, I have heard that what's happening is they have um, there's an iPhone setup. We can do it with an iPhone. We can actually oh. talk to it. Yeah, yeah, there is. Right now, this is uh, not not unless you do it. And there's a little bit of work involved, but yeah, mm -hmm. there is one. Now, this is chat GDP 3.5, I think, and it has 187 billion parameters. Uh, I believe that chat GPT-4 will have somewhere in the trillions, and that's release is going relatively soon. So you're going to see that do a lot more. I'm assuming it would be nice to see this hooked into a CICD pipeline. It would be nice to see that voice interface. Yeah, 
but then it's talking back to you. How do you feel about that? So they're 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 saying that the next version is going to be a stellar, uh, a stellar version of this. So I, I'm pretty happy with this right now. It's pretty satisfying to, to you know to just you know have this do all the coding for you and concentrate at a higher level. Yeah, higher level like engineering or architect level. If you're like me, you know all about the coding, you know how to code, but you, you're bored by it. And this is not boring. This is pretty exciting. And it gives you wings because you can do a lot really fast. And that was the code that was we created. And you saw that it ran. All right. Okay, let's have a little bit more discussion. I know it's a small group, but I think it's a great video.